Hey YouTube, welcome back to my TypeScript series. In the previous video, I went over the primitive types that TypeScript has to offer, but sometimes the type of data that you want to model is more complex and can't be represented with basic primitives. So usually this means that you're working with objects in your code, and in TypeScript, interfaces help you create these complex types. They're a powerful way of defining contracts within your code. So let's say I want to create a function that takes a student object and prints the ID of the student. So we have a function called print student ID, and it takes in a student object and prints the ID property on ID on student. We want to tell TypeScript the shape of student, and of course we can't say that it's number boolean. It's it's we can't use primitive types. We have to use a more complex type. And we can also, we can, besides primitive types, we can annotate types to be more complex shapes like objects. So here I am telling TypeScript that the shape of student should have an ID property and the value of the ID key should be a number. So if I pass in, let's say I create an object and I have, let's say, only a name and then I call it with this student, we get the nice type error saying that this type, this argument that we pass into the function is not assignable to the parameter type. There's a total mismatch. If we pass in even ID as, as a key, it's not a number, it's a string. So TypeScript will still complain saying that, that this type ID string is not assignable to ID number. So of course, we can get, we can switch it to the correct correct uh, type, and TypeScript won't complain. We can rewrite this code in a cleaner way by using an interface which describes the shape of the student object. So here, up up here, I'm going to declare it with the interface keyword and then the name of the interface, and then I'm going to say that all types of type student have an ID key, and a and the and the type of the value is a number. So here I can replace this type annotation with the interface, and I get the same type safety. If I pass in a name, it's going to give me a type error, ID that's not a number type error, and yeah. So one thing to note that's a bit different from other languages is that we didn't have to explicitly tell TypeScript that the type of student is of the same type of this interface. In TypeScript, only the shape matters. So if we pass in an object, that has the same shape as the declared type, then that's fine. And this is called structural typing, also known as duct typing. The essence of duct typing can be described with the saying, if something walks like a duck and talks like a duck, then we're going to call it a duck. The only thing that the print student ID function cares about is that the object that you pass it in for student has the ID property. So you can even pass in a name property, and I can pass it Jeff, and the code will still pass type checking. And this is because all print student ID cares about is that the object that we pass in has the ID property, has the has ID as a key, and the, and the type of the value is number, because all it wants to do is print this out, or maybe do some other number-like things. You know, we, we have nice, prop, nice methods uh, because we know that the ID is a property. So let's say we wanted to, to convert this to a fixed number. We, we know that we can do that in print student ID because that the type of ID is number. That's all print student ID cares about. It doesn't really care if there's extra properties um, or anything like that because this object, it, it walks like a student, right? And it talks like a student in the sense that it has this same, it, it, it adheres to the to the definition of student, if that's if you pass an object that that adheres to the definition of student, then type checker will be fine. It doesn't really matter that we have this extra thing, and this is called structural typing. And this is why TypeScript uses structural typing. It's how JavaScript code is naturally written. In JavaScript, you use anonymous objects and function expressions. You don't say, "Hey, this object is a type student." And with structural typing, it's much more natural to represent the types of relationships found in JavaScript compared to the other common um, typing system called nominal typing, where 
in languages like Java and C++, the type of a uh, variable or value is a specific type because you tell the compiler that it is that type, not because the shape of the um, object is of that type. So one feature that TypeScript offers when working with types and interfaces is something called excess property checking. And excess property checking is very important for you to wrap your mind around, your head around, because it's a crucial mental model when working with TypeScript. For example, let's say I wanted to call, I wanted to print my student ID again, but instead of declaring an intermediate variable, I'm going to pass in directly an object literal. The reason why I get an error on this line, but not on this line, is because TypeScript performs excess property checking. TypeScript takes the stance that there's probably a bug when you're passing in an object literal with extra properties like name that's not defined on the student type. A pure structural typing, a language with a pure structural typing system wouldn't give you this error because technically you're doing the same thing right here and here. But TypeScript takes a stance that if you're giving an, uh, if you're given an extra property, you might expect that this function uses this extra property. So I might expect this function to print out Jeff123. But in reality, it doesn't. So TypeScript intervenes here and takes a stance that, hey, you're declaring an object literal, and you probably think that this function is going to use this information, but it's not. So I'm going to give you a type error. But the reason why it doesn't give you an error here is because when you declare an object right here, the variable right here, with the name Jeff, TypeScript trusts you that you that you know that when you pass in this object into this function, it trusts you that since you know, since you declare outside of the uh, object literal, that you know that it's not going to do anything with this extra property. And it only does this excess property checking when you pass in object literals. So it's very important to realize the limitations of excess property checking and realize that it's only being, being performed on object literals. So really, this behavior is can be misleading because you think that if you pass in student to the function that it's going to use this information, where in reality, it has no idea that this name exists. Let's look at another example that's similar to the ideas being shown on these two lines that really show when you have to be careful of what you're passing to specific functions. Let's say I wanted to compute the, I wanted to compute the average of a course load. So I'll declare a part-time course load. And it has two, two properties. It has uh, the first grade, which is a number, and the second grade, which is a number as well. So then at first, I will create a function called compute average that takes in a part-time course load. Let's just call this, let's call it part-time course load. And it is of the type of this. And what this does is returns the part-time course load first grade plus the course load second grade. And it averages them out, so it divides them by 200 because the total of the two grades, the, total, the maximum total is 200. Let's say that we have another interface, or let's say we have another function called print average. So we can we can say let's say in development that someone creates this function and it's being used somewhere in the code base. Let's say a few weeks pass by or whatever, and someone wants to create another function that prints the average, but for full-time course loads, not part-time course loads. So I'm gonna create a function called print average, but this print average prints to the console full-time course loads. So I'm gonna make an interface for that. 
whoops, full time course load. And this has a first grade and second grade, but also has a third grade. So this print average prints full time course loads, so it's going to take a full time course load. And it's going to be the type full time course load. And what this is going to do is let's say I'm the developer creating this print average function, and I see in the code base, oh, there's a compute average, and it takes in a course load. Here, I can tell, I can already tell that there's a bug, going to be a bug because I, I, have, I have good names that this compute average function takes in a part time course load. But let's say the developer is being stupid and he doesn't know that. He or she doesn't know that. So they say they want to compute the average. So say average. Average equals compute average. We're calling the compute average function. And we're passing in our full time course load. And then after, we'll say console.log. Your full time course load average is average. The problem here is that in this function, I'm allowed to pass in full-time course load as a argument to the part-time course load parameter because according to structural typing, the computer average doesn't care if there's a third grade property on this object. All it cares is that it has access to first grade and second grade. So as a caller, if I call print average and I pass in a full-time course load object, let's say I get 80 and then oof, I get 55 and then maybe like a 78. <laughs> This is going to lead to misleading behavior because I think this is going to print the average of three grades, whereas in reality, this is computing the average for two grades. And the code compiles because this is what structural typing is at its core. So the intended behavior that we probably want is that we want compute average to reject anything that is not a part-time course load. So we want to actually include some sort of nominal typing. We want to reject, we want to have a type error right here to prevent us from this because we want compute average to, yeah, reject anything that's not a part-time course load to prevent misleading behavior like this where we expect it to actually use extra information like third grade. So the way we can fix this is with a branding property. We can add a brand property right here and this is common this is a common style thing in JavaScript where we use underscores before properties to show that this property is like a meta property. It's like a property that describe that, that's like metadata for the type. And we can say that it's it should directly have a, it's not going to be a type of a string. It's going to actually, we're going to directly assign it the part-time brand. So right when we add that brand part-time, we can also add another brand right here called full-time, right? And of course, this is, this is going to error now because we're not passing in an object that conforms to the full-time course of type. So let's pass in the brand that's full-time. And then we get our desired behavior where we get an error at the call of compute average when we call in a full-time course load that is not a part-time course load. And as you can see, the type error says, the types of property brand are incompatible. The type full-time is not assignable to type part-time. So it's a bit it can be a bit confusing at first because full-time and part-time are, are technically strings, but they can also be classified as types as well. And I'll go um, into that topic in a later video. I'll go deeper into that topic. But this is the desired behavior. We are essentially mimicking nominal, nominal, types, nominal typing um, by telling the rest of the world that this that this course load should be a part-time course load and not anything else. And this way, because we get this error, you can see as a developer, ah, this is what we're passing in is not a part-time course load. It's probably not going to use all the information correctly as to what we expect.